This video will discuss the calculation of torsion angles in molecules. So to define a torsion angle, that's going to be an angle between two normal vectors of two planes from four points. So that sounds fairly abstract and complicated, but let's break it down so that it isn't. So what we're going to have is we're going to have four atoms, I, J, K, and L. So I can label those here, I, J, K, and L. All right, what we have to have in this situation is I, J, don't want that color, I want the purple. Okay, we want I, J, J, K, and K, L. Those three sets are all bonded to one another. In order for this to be a torsion we care about. Okay, and the simplest possible molecule that's an example of something with a torsion angle is hydrogen peroxide, HOOH. So I have that here inside of Avogadro. So if I look, turn on my measurement tool, I look at it here. So I can see there are three bond lengths, uh, two bond angles, and then what we're going to see is a torsion, which is going to be this angle here, So, which we'll describe in this video. So if I measure it, one, two, three, four, what it says is I have my bond distances, I have my bond angle of 96 degrees there, and my dihedral of minus 180 degrees, which you can see there is indeed 180 degrees. So let's get to the point where we can measure that ourselves. All right, so if I take this hydrogen peroxide and I look at a Newman projection of it, of I, J, K, and L, what am I going to have? So we're going to have... All right, so let's label these atoms here. We have I at the bottom, we have L at the top, obviously, and we're looking down the J, K vector. So K is further away from us than J is, which goes out to L at the end there. And then our torsion angle here is this angle uh, between uh, projected into this, into this axis of the angle between our LK and JI uh, vectors. So that's what we'll call our phi, or our torsion angle. So this is going to be the angle between planes IJK and KJL. Three points, three nonlinear points to find a plane, another three nonlinear points to find a plane. The normal vector is per perpendicular to that plane, and then the angle between those normal vectors will determine our torsion angle here. Okay, so what do we need to do in order to calculate this? Well, we need quite a few quantities that are going on inside this molecule. So we're going to have things like unit vector r hat ji, unit vector r hat jk, r hat kj, and r hat kl. And then there's going to be some bond angles that we need as well in there, theta, jkl, and theta, ijk. Okay, so I think that's enough of a mess for now. So continuing on, what we need to define down here is the vector cross product. Again, hopefully a review of some calculus or algebra, linear algebra course, but perhaps not. So let's define what that is. So if I have two vectors, A and B, I can define the cross product between them by this X, sometimes circled as well, which is equal to, I can draw it as a determinant of the three unit vectors, Cartesian unit vectors X, Y, and Z hat. So AX, AY, AZ, bx, by, bz. So if you know how to expand a 3x3 three three determinant, then you know what this value is going to be. But in case you don't, let's go through what that is as well. So we have a 
cross B is going to equal AY BZ minus AZ BY times X hat. Then we do cyclic permutations of all the indices to get to the next one. So we're going to have AZ BX minus AX BZ times y hat, so that's the y component of the vector, plus cyclic permutations again, a x b y minus a y b x times z hat, the z unit vector. Okay, so that is the cross product of two vectors. So now we're going to use that to define the normal vector between two, uh, the normal vector of a plane. So normal vector to plane ijk, which is just a vector which is perpendicular to plane ijk. So in this case, ijk, uh, by the right hand rule, this would be pointing out of the board. So if I have one there, it's going to be pointing out of the board. And uh, for jkl, by the right hand rule, also going to be pointing out of the board for that normal vector. Okay, but getting back to it over here, let's see, that is going to be equal to, I'm going to have r hat ji cross r hat jk divided by, and then I need to make sure that this is a unit vector. So based off the properties of cross products, what it ends up working out being is that I need to divide by, divide by the sine of theta ijk. So dividing by the sine of the angle uh, that defines the plane of these unit vectors here. Okay, and same thing for normal to plane jkl. That is going to be defined by r hat kj cross r hat kl divided by, and we're going to normalize that vector by dividing by the sine of theta jkl. Okay, so we've used all six quantities that we defined initially in our ijkl set there. So that's why we had to define all of those cases. So now we have these two, uh, these two normal vectors here. All right, now we need the dot product between those two. So we have dot product between these, which is going to give us, which if we define these values, let's say we define these vectors as say n hat ijk for normal vector, and we define this as n hat jkl then the dot product between these is going to give us our theta, our, or our phi of interest. So dot product between these, what we're, end up, we're going to end up getting similarly to how we defined uh, the previous result for bond angles, we're going to get phi ijkl equals the arc cosine of the dot product n hat ijk dot n hat jkl. So substituting in these original values here, what we're going to get for our final value is that phi ijkl is equal to the arc cosine of r hat ji cross r hat jk dot r hat kj cross r hat kl. Have we had enough vector algebra yet? Sine theta ijk times sine theta jkl. So that is our final result there in those terms. Uh, one thing you may be asking yourself is how do I get this sine of theta ijk? Well, we know what the 
cosine of it is because or we know we can we know what the angle is so we can get the angle from the dot products of ji and jk and kj and kl and we can get the angle from that uh, because we can get that from the from the arc cosine of that from the definition of dot products but uh, there's there's a another way if you know you're restricted to the to the proper domain of sine we also know that we know that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we know that sine is equal to plus or minus. You have to make the correct choice of 1 minus cosine squared theta. So for this, for i, j, and j, k, you can take the dot product of j, i, j, k and then do 1 minus the square of that square root can give you the sine. So that's where we're going to get the sine from and when it, where I'm going to be computing it. Uh, if we talk about the domain of the possible values we can have for torsion angles, that's important to discuss. Uh, I'm going to use the convention that I'm going to go from minus 180 up to positive 180 degrees or minus pi to pi radians some some programs and some people use a convention that it goes from 0 to 360 so just make sure that you're not in that uh, case there um, you can interconvert between those easily because uh, the, you can add or subtract 360 degrees at will to get whatever value you need in the range that you need it okay and what else are we gonna have um, we have the case that things like phi ijkl is equal to phi lkji. So if I look at this from the reverse angle, if I if I change all my numbering and I look at it from the other way, I'm going to end up getting the same value. So I could actually trade all the indices here and I'd actually compute the same result. So there's a symmetry there that we don't want to overcount if we're doing this correctly. So that's another important thing to keep an eye on and then there's also a point where we need to determine the sign there's an extra caveat for determining the sign but I'm gonna be out of space and out of time here so sign is whether our n hat jkl our normal to plane jkl and the dot product of that with r hat j i. So we've got a we've got a dot, we've got a vec normal vector to this plane here coming out this coming out whichever way that comes out. Let's see. J K L right hand rule. I believe that's going to point this way. So that's going to be coming out this way. And then the dot product of that with j, r hat j i, if that is positive then it is going to be a positive sign on our torsion and if it's a negative it's going to be negative so if that is greater than zero then we have positive and less than zero is negative and if it's zero then the angle is going to be zero so no worries no worries there alright so that's our torsion so quickly moving along to our web browser we have our program here inside of Jupyter now called torsions.py instead of angles.py so let's scroll through this and see what's new uh, relative to last time a lot of the same functionality as before let's see first new function we're gonna get is one that will be printing out all of our torsion values once we have found all of them so a function there um, we very much do need the cross product function now, so we have discussed why we're going to need that. Um, we have this function for getting the torsion angle. You see the four unit vectors, uh, the two cross products, and the dot product of those cross products, getting the sign, returning uh, the final value there. Okay, and there's also going to be a function to get the individual torsions when we have ij bonded ij is bonded, jk is bonded, and kl is bonded. So that's what's inside of all that for loop business there. 
Then when we go to our main block, we've got just a, two new lines here, I believe, uh, getting the torsions from the geometry and the bond tree and printing out the value of those torsions. So we can run this program on our hydrogen peroxide on our H2O2 in our XYZ file. So going over here, now I've changed this to torsions.py to run into HOOH.xyz. I can run that here. You can see I've already run it, but let's just hit shift enter and run it again for good measure. So there's the initial geometry uh, repeated. Uh, there are three bonds at those lengths and angstroms, two angles with those atoms at 96.57 degrees. And we have our one torsion angle, which is minus 180 degrees, uh, which is in agreement with what we saw earlier calculated by Avogadro.